in public health report issued by the U.S. Public Health Service for January 10th, 1919, volume 34, number 2, page 33, is discussed some experimental efforts by medical officers of the Medical Corps, USNRF, and the U.S. Public Health Service at the U.S. Quarantine Station, Gallops Island, Boston, Massachusetts, to transmit influenza from the sick to well men. A number of different experiments were made on 68 volunteers from U.S. Naval Detention Training Camp on Deer Island. Several groups of men, volunteers, were inoculated with pure cultures of Pfeiffer's bacillus with secretions from the upper respiratory passages and with blood from typical cases of influenza. About 30 men had the germs sprayed or swabbed in nose and throat. They say of the results. In no instance was an attack of influenza produced in any one of the subjects. Ten more men were taken to the bedside of ten new cases of influenza spent 45 minutes with them, and each well man had 10 sick men cough in his face. They say of these cases, none of these volunteers developed any symptoms of influenza following this experiment. In another article, the results of similar experiments in San Francisco are described. In these experiments, one group of 10 men had emulsifying cultures of Pfeiffer's bacillus with no results in seven days observations. Other groups of men, 40 in all, received emulsions of secretions from the upper respiratory passages of active cases of influenza, which were instilled into nose by a medicine dropper or atomizer. Of these it says, in every case the results were negative, so far as the reproduction of influenza is concerned. The men were all observed for seven days after inoculation. Last but not least, Dr. John B. Frazier, MDCM, in an article entitled, Do Germs Cause Disease? in the Physical Culture magazine for May 1919, says that experiments carried out in Toronto in 1911 and 1912 and 1913 proved that germs only appear after the onset of disease, and goes on to say, and this fact led to the supposition that germs were simply a byproduct of disease and possibly harmless. He also describes experiments where millions of germs were fed to patients in their food, were swabbed over the tonsils and soft palate, under the tongue and in the nostrils, and still no evidence of disease was discernible. The germs used in this experiment include the germs of diphtheria, pneumonia, typhoid fever, meningitis, and tuberculosis, and no evidence of the diseases have developed in nearly five years. He says, during the years 1914, 15, 16, 17, and 18, over 150 experiments were carried out carefully and scientifically, and yet absolutely no signs of disease followed.